Every time I mention sodium ion batteries on this channel, someone always says, yeah, but those aren't real, they're just a science experiment, you can't even buy them yet. You can, and it makes me laugh because that is exactly what people said back in the day in the 90s about lithium ion. Fast forward to now, and it's powering basically everything that we own, so I want to talk about the truth, or the real down-to-earth truth, the real data, and uh, the real news about them, because behind sodium ion batteries, there's a lot to talk about. There's also a lot of confusion, and some of it is understandable. They sound quite new, they sound experimental, but what's happening right now, in 2025, is actually a quiet revolution that is getting very little attention, hence why I've talked about it a couple of times. Let's jump into it. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of the new uh, members, uh, such as Chris Harris and also Ted. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So today we're going to go through the biggest myths about sodium ion memory uh, batteries, not memories, what am I on about? Not from a marketing perspective. This is not hype. It's uh, just facts context, a bit of common sense, basically. So let's start with the very first myth on my list. So nobody's making them yet. That's already outdated. CATL's sodium ion battery called the Naxtra battery is in mass production as we speak now, a little bit earlier than December, which was what they had said. Hina battery in China is shipping commercial packs for buses and grid storage. So you can definitely go buy them. And there's a massive sodium ion energy storage project already running in Germany. So this idea that sodium ion is still in a lab somewhere, that's just wrong. It's not, it's that's rubbish really. So the truth is we're already seeing it hit the real world market. It's not just mainstream yet because the first batches are going into cheaper city cars and big stationary storage systems. So right now we're at uh, the turning point with uh, that lithium ion hit maybe uh, 15 years ago, something like that, roughly. I'm sure some people have got an opinion on that. The next myth I want to talk about is they're still years away. This one always makes me really smile, almost, because we're currently very, very excited about and happy to have BYD blade batteries, 165 watt hour per kilogram, something like that, give or take a few. But the Naxtra sodium ion chemistry, which is now in production a little bit early uh, in November, not December, uh, this year, is 175. So... It's, it, it, you know, it is better and also it comes with less negatives and more pros. Be it's more safe, thermally safer as well. It can work better in cold climates. You can mostly charge at the normal rate, even if it's minus 20, which is incredible. And also you don't lose very much capacity even when it's really, really cold. And so therefore, even when it's cold, you can use it like a normal, a normal car on a, a spring or summer's day. So this one always makes me chuckle because of that, and uh, CATL and BYD are both building lines and factories uh, to produce sodium battery packs in scale this year. Cherry also have an upcoming compact EV, and that is expected to be the first mass market car using them, and deliveries are planned for uh, in the next month, actually, for the starting uh, delivery dates. So no, they're not years away, they're actually months away at most, and uh, yeah, from being inside production cars, I mean, it's in, it's happening faster than most people realise, but because it isn't coming from uh, big Western brands like Volkswagen or Mercedes or, uh, you know, different companies like man legacy automakers and that sort of stuff, they can't be recycled. That's the next myth. Actually, they're easier to recycle than lithium-ion chemistry. There's no cobalt, uh, there's no nickel, uh, no expensive or toxic metals to deal with. They're a lot simpler, really. So recycling companies can already recover over well over 90% of sodium, iron, and aluminium, and it's cleaner, it's simpler. Actually, one of the processes that I talked about in a recent video was recovering 94 to 96, 96.7% of certain materials in there. So while the infrastructure is not as developed yet, the chemistry itself makes recycling less of a headache not more of a headache. So if anything, sodium ion is the first mainstream chemistry that could make battery recycling 
genuinely sustainable. There's a, you know, probably a bit of an inverted commas, you know, sustainable. But uh, yeah, they degrade quickly. That is the next one I want to talk about. So that used to be true. The earlier sodium prototypes would lose capacity fast, especially after a few hundred cycles. But that's been solved. So now they're actually incredibly, incredibly good. Better than LFP chemistry. Modern sodium ion cells now last between three to 5,000 charge cycles while still keeping after that 80 to 85 percent capacity. That is basically the same as LFP chemistry plus plus some. It's actually better. So uh, yeah, this is what Tesla and BYD use in their base models, LFP chemistry by the way. Some lab tests even show better stability at low temperatures, which is weak, uh, a weak spot for lithium ion. So no, they don't die young anymore basically. If you drive a small city EV with a sodium battery pack, you're probably going to wear out the tires before the battery. The next myth, they're expensive, aren't they? No, not, not even close. The whole reason companies like CATL are investing so heavily in sodium ion is because it cuts cost. Uh, sodium is one of the most common elements on Earth. It literally is just salt, and you don't need to dig it out of the a politically fragile desert in South America or in, I don't know, somewhere in China and ship it to Europe or refine it in a coal-powered plant. It's just so much simpler to use uh, to produce batteries. Analysts estimate sodium ion packs could drop below $40 per kilowatt hour by 2027, compared with around 60 to 70 for lithium ion phosphate today, which is massive, that's a big deal. And it means that we could see more yachts in Monaco or cheaper cars. We, one of the two, we don't know yet. So if you care about cheap EVs or they, them just getting cheaper, then this is an important thing. Sodium ion chemistry might actually be the key to that. The next myth, they'll replace lithium entirely. No, I, I really don't think so at all. Actually, one of my videos in the next week is gonna be talking about this. Sodium ion is not here to kill lithium. It's here to work alongside it. Think of it like uh, diesel versus petrol back in the day. Each had a purpose and different parts of the world could use different you know, different uh, pe petrol there and diesel over there a little bit more easily, depending on where it's produced or refined and that sort of stuff. Lithium still wins for high energy density, long range, premium cars, but sodium makes more sense for most of us actually to buy uh, for city commuters or budget EVs, home storage batteries. It's cheaper, safer, easier to scale, probably gonna be easier to import and export that as a product as well. So the truth is sodium iron, isn't a competitor to lithium really, it's just a complement or something that will run uh, parallel to it, I think, at least in the next five or 10 years. If you care about getting more people driving electric sooner, then this is the chemistry that will probably make that happen. They can't power electric cars because they're too weak. That is the next myth. I have literally seen that once or twice in the last uh, several days, actually. So that was a little bit true, actually, a few years ago. Uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago, the first sodium cells had energy densities of around 80 watt hour per kilogram, which is terrible, uh, way too low for vehicles. And then it was probably maybe five years ago, it was 120 to 140 and still not great. But the new generation from CATL sits around 160 to 175, literally took them not that much money to, to invest in to get those numbers as well. Only took two or three years as well. So we're all kind of keen to see what happens if they apply themselves and pay more money? Can they make them even better? That means realistic range, uh, 250 to 350 kilometers for a compact TV. BYD's early sodium ion prototypes reportedly charged uh, from 30 to 80% in under 20 minutes. So not weak at all. It's actually strong enough for 90% of the trips that people do every week. Uh, you know, you, sure, you're probably not going to be driving from Sydney to Perth in a charge, but that was not really what, you know, that's not the point. That's not the aim, really. So, and the next myth is sodium ion batteries are brand new technology. No, this is the biggest misunderstanding of all. Sodium ion is not new. It was invented in the 70s at the same time as lithium ion, actually, and, uh, but in a different place, but in the same sort of period of time, it just didn't take off then because energy density was too low, nobody needed a cheaper alternative. And uh, yeah, as lithium got more expensive and demand exploded, researchers circled back to sodium and said, we can fix the old problems, let's have a go at that, we can save some money I reckon. 
So what you're seeing now is not uh, some wild experiment. It's decades of quiet R&D finally coming to fruition. There have been things sat there, but uh, nobody really looked at it, I don't think, in the last uh, 10, 15 years. And then CATL in 2020, 2021, they started putting more money into it. And then they really did actually try to do some stuff with it in 2022. And then 2024, they said they'd come out with the, basically the Nextra battery. And uh, and then it was really made public in 2025. And uh, now it's in mass production. Now, if you zoom out, what we're really witnessing is the same story that happens in every tech industry. First comes the expensive version serve the rich people, that sort of stuff. And then the paupers, obviously, poor people can buy cars. So sodium ion batteries are the accessible version of clean energy storage, in my view. So they won't power every Tesla or luxury SUV, but they'll power the cars that millions of people can actually afford. And I think that's the point. That's the point, isn't it? So this, for the average person, this could mean cheaper EVs, safer batteries, fewer supply chain bottlenecks for governments, it means energy independence, and for the planet, it means we can store renewable energy without depending on rare or prob problematic, very problematic materials. So the next time you see a comment or anything like that, and someone is saying, yeah, but sodium iron is not real yet, or, or eh, there's a couple of other comments, you can actually tell them, actually it is. You're a buffoon, basically, so do your research. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate your time. Thank you to all the members on the screen. These are the channel members. These are the legends. So thank you very much. And uh, if you enjoyed this one, leave a comment and tell me which one of these myths you'd heard before, if you've heard them before. Uh, I spend obviously a lot of time reading the comments. So yeah, I probably have, I have seen them all. And let me know if there's another one that you think deserves a mention.